Welcome back to another video. Are you looking for the best pet fish that you can keep in a 10 to a 20 gallon tank that's food aggressive and is amazing to look at? Well, then stay tuned for today's video. You already know what we're talking about. This is a care guide about pearl danios and zebra danios. Now their care is fairly similar and you can keep them together in tanks. Believe it or not, a lot of people think you can't keep, they are the same species, they are just different subspecies and they will school together as you'll see in my tanks. But let's get into this video. So the first thing you're gonna obviously need for any aquarium or any fish is a tank. Now, my recommendation is no smaller than 10 gallon. Obviously bigger is always better, but they can live in a 10 gallon their whole life. But I would definitely also recommend upgrading. So say you get your tank, it can be a 10, a 20 gallon. Now the best time to buy your tanks is actually around when PetSmart or Petco or any of those companies have this thing called a dollar per gallon sale. Now a dollar per gallon sale is Pretty much a sale where any tank up to 40 gallons is $1 for the gallon. So if it's 20 gallon, it's $20. 10 gallon, $10. 5 gallon, you get the point, obviously. Um, so that's for the dollar per gallon sale. That's when I would recommend buying your tanks. Um, and also, you're going to need a lid for that tank. Now, I honestly don't have a lid. I'm not even going to lie. I was going to make one. But then I noticed these fish really don't jump. Now, they do de definitely jump. So I wouldn't take the risk for yourself. But I'm willing to take this risk. And if they do jump out... Um, well, then I will obviously get a lid, but I am working on probably going to make one out of either like egg crate, light diffuser, that makes a pretty good lid as long as you put screen mesh over it. Um, I might make one out of glass or I might just buy one off of like Amazon or something along those lines. Now, you got your tank, you got your lid. Now, let's just talk about what you're going to want to put in that tank. So they do really, really, really good in planted tanks. Um, as you guys can see, I do have mine in a planted aquarium and they absolutely love it in that planted tank. And I love having a planted tank. Um, so, but they do find in artificial tanks too. Um, this is just my sister's artificial beta tank, but I'm just showing you guys that they, what an artificial tank looks like. Um, it can be fake plants with some live plants. It can just be all fake. Um, but the number one thing you definitely want to look out for is make sure when you put those artificial plants in the tank that you just wash them off because you never know what chemicals they could have on them from the factory or anything like that. So once you get your plants in the tank, um, well, you're probably going to pick out your decor first. I would recommend at least one hiding spot. You can see my tank, I have like this little cave. My sister's tank has this little like house thing. If you want to go more official, if you want to go more natural, make a cave out of rocks. But I would always recommend a hive where fish can just go to feel safe because fish always, always want to feel safe and you just have to have that spot. Not that these fish hide in my experience, but you always want to have make your fish just feel safe and secure. Um, so I always recommend having a hiding, a hiding place. Now, after you got your decor picked out, you're going to want your substrate. Now, if you're doing a planted tank, you might want to go with something like flugel stratum or eco complete. Or even you can, for planted tanks, as long as you're doing like java fern and anubias, you can even do something as simple as just some nice sand. Yeah, this is my turtle tank with some sand in it, as you can see, but that's just some nice sand right there that I was just showing you. This is pool filter sand, and you can also use play sand. Now, if you want to go for more of an artificial tank, you can use gravel. This is my sister's white gravel that she definitely needs clean. I have, um, what I personally use is I use Eco Complete. Um, the black version. They also have a reddish version, which is really cool. But I just use Eco Complete and the black version. Um, that's what I use for my tank. And as I said, I do have a planted tank, so it really depends on like what type of style. So the first thing I'd recommend is getting your tank, determining what size you want to do, then determine if you want to do a, a artificial tank or a planted tank. And then once you have your artificial tank and your planted tank down, and you've already made up your mind on what you want to do now, you're going to want to do this thing called the nitrogen cycle. So the first thing you're going to want to do is set up that tank, and you're going to want to rinse out that gravel. You're going to want to rinse out this gravel. You're going to want to put the gravel in or the... Um, uh, plant a tank substrate 
and then you're going to want to dec decorate it and then slowly fill it up obviously if you're doing a planted tank i do have a whole planted tank playlist i'll link that up in the i card and also first link in the description also any videos i talk about will be linked in the description and also my discord if you guys want to join that'd be really helpful you guys can talk with other people of the reptile community so i really would hope you guys would join the dis discord link it's toward the bottom of the description so yeah that would just mean a lot to me um also let's get back on track now so you have your tank you've made up your mind and you're filling it up with water now you're gonna need this thing called the chlorinator now the chlorinator what this does is takes all the ammonia i'm um, not the ammonia sorry it takes all the chlorine and uh the bad stuff out of your tap water now you can also use distilled water but i would just personally recommend just using the chlorinator just to always be safe now they have like the different types there's like aquion there's api and my favorite obviously is prime but I don't have it because it is pretty, pretty expensive. And now, if you want to set up that tank today, which I don't recommend, if it's your first fish tank, I think you should probably cycle it. Um, but let's talk about if you want to set it up today. You can buy this thing called Quick Start. Now, this is just beneficial bacteria that's in a bottle. You shake it up and you pour it in. This will help to ease the nitrogen cycle. Now, if you don't know what the nitrogen cycle is, um, I'll link a really good video up here about that. It's not my video, but it is a really good video and I don't care if you guys watch somebody else's video, it's just a good video. Um, so yeah, I recommend you watch that, but I'll explain it quickly. Pretty much the nitrogen cycle is the process of you cycling the tank to get ready for the fish. Now, that water has no nutrients in it, so what you're going to have to do is take some fish food, sprinkle it in, right, and you're going to want to let the filter just suck up that fish food and just get through the fish food and like spit the fish food out and that's going to cause ammonia now what ammonia does is that's bad for the fish and now you're going to let that filter take that ammonia suck it into the pads and create good bacteria beneficial bacteria now that beneficial bacteria has to build up build up so that when you put the fish in the whole thing doesn't go into shock and just collapse now with danios they do need a heater because they are tropical fish so you're going to want a filter and a heater for me it really depends on the tank size you're going to use for your filters and your heaters but personally I use a 10 gallon filter because I do have a 10 gallon tank and they don't want a lot of surface flow so honestly don't get too powerful of a filter on top they don't like a lot of surface flow just because they do spend most of their time at the top of the water column top and mid water column so they don't like too too much surface flow um, they want a heater set to 78 degrees around that um, so yeah and I don't really know too too much about pH and all that stuff but I mean your general water is good these are not like expert fish or anything like that your general water should just be good just make sure it's not too low or too too high anything above like 7.8 i would definitely stay away from anything below like six i would definitely stay away from sorry if you guys hear noise in the background but um so you've got your tank you've got your fish you are cycling it which means you wait about two weeks for that fish food you just add a little bit of fish food i think it's like once every two days or something just to let that beneficial bacteria cycle up or you can just use the quick start which is a bit easier if you want more research on the nitrogen cycle like i said video will be linked up here um this person does a really good job of explaining it um and i just want to make sure that you guys know how to do it um because i have not made a video on that yet and then so after you've cycled your tank and you're like can i put fish in yet it's been two weeks or you did or you use the quick start yes it is finally time to add your fish now you can go with a bunch of different types of danios there's zebra danios which i'm showing you in this little clip here there's pearl danios which i also have you can keep them in the same tank believe it or not and then there's albino zebra danios which i'm showing you here now there's a lot of different types of danios so it really depends on what you want to do you can even mix and match them because they have pretty much the same care requirements just make sure there's at least like three pearls and like three um zebras and also i'd recommend keeping them in schools of like eight um that's what i have i have eight in there so i def or six actually i have six but i'm probably gonna get two more you just don't want to throw a lot of bio load on so maybe start off with four and then next week get two more and then get two more um just because you don't want to throw a lot of bio load onto your system especially if it is a new tank um but if it's an old tank then you're fine and then once you have set up your tank you can get a light any type of light really works unless you're growing plants then you might want to pick up a plant light i'll put up some cheap plant lights i found on amazon right here um so yeah definitely um look into a plant light if you want to um and also you can get like special color enhancing lights and all that stuff so you got your fish you got your food now i mean you got your fish you got your light you got your tank now you're wondering what type of food you're going to need now so the food i'd personally recommend for all small tropical fish is this food called flugel 
bug bites. Now this is like amazing food. You can see it's like these really small granules that your fish can digest very, very easily. You just put a pinch in there and they should be good. They're very, very, very aggressive eaters as you can see in this clip. They're just like coming up and grabbing it out of the surface and they were also hand feed. There's a video in my Discord of them actually hand feeding. So if you want to see that, join my Discord link in the description. Self promotion. But like I said, they love hand feeding, and they also like algae wafers, blood worms, freeze dried blood worms, and also frozen thawed blood worms. And you can also feed them Daphnia. They really do like a lot of things. Um, variety is also key with your fish. Um, don't feed them too too much flakes. Um, flakes are not the best for your fish. Uh, so yeah, I definitely would recommend that. If you guys do have any comments, questions, or concerns, or anything I did leave out in this video, let me know in the description below. Um, also, for your like weekly maintenance, or depending on what tank you have, if you have an artificial tank, probably every, uh, like every 10 days I do a water change, which means you just go in there, you suck up some water, and then you're good. That will also be in the description. I did a video on that, on how to do a water change. You just suck out like 10, 25% of the water. If you have a planted tank that is really up to your water, you make sure you test your water, guys. Um, you always want to test your water, especially when it's a new tank, just to make sure your water is a-okay. And thank you guys for watching. Make sure you do research. I'm my zoo. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Like I said, drop a comment. It really just helps the algorithm boost my video. And also, if you got any questions, concerns, comments, anything like that, drop them in the comment section below. If you want to talk with me and chat with me more, like I said, join my Discord. I'll link in the description. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Make sure you do research, and I'm out. Peace.